no ancient scrolls record their history. No age-old language tells their story. Only architectural fragments, artifacts, and crumbling tombs remain to give us an insight into Italy's first civilization, the intriguing, wondrous, but seemingly vanished culture of the Etruscans. The Etruscans have long been regarded as the enigma of the ancient world. Predating the Roman Empire by centuries, Etruria emerged out of prehistoric Italy about 900 years before the birth of Christ. They dominated central Italy in the area that is now modern Tuscany, Latium, and Umbria. To resurrect the Etruscan spirit, we must go to their necropolis, their cities of the dead. From their tombs and burial paintings, the shroud of mystery surrounding these people can be parted. They were a festive, sensual people. They loved music and color, celebrations, dancing, horses, and sports. The Greek writer Athenius said, the Etruscans so loved music that they kneaded their bread, practiced boxing, and whipped their slaves to the sound of pipes. The spiritual and mystical aspects of life enthralled them. They emphasized preparations for life after death, practiced faith healing, and hung on the words of fortune tellers and soothsayers. It was an Etruscan priest who divined the assassination of Julius Caesar and warned him to beware the Ides of March. They even predicted their own demise, prophesying that their civilization would last for a period equivalent to 900 years, a prophecy fulfilled with fatalistic and uncanny accuracy. Although a highly literate and refined people, their poetry, literature, and history have all but vanished, and the grand monuments proclaiming past glories no longer exist. Only from their tombs can we weave together the rich and colorful tapestry of Etruscan civilization, and from their art, their beauty and creativity. Borrowing freely from other civilizations, the Etruscans transmitted important aspects of culture. They learned the alphabet from the Greeks, adapted it to suit their needs, and passed some of it on to the Romans. But their greatest legacy is perhaps the city of Rome itself. In the 6th century BC, Etruscan kings fortified the city, paved the forum, created a master sewer system, and built some of the most majestic structures in all of archaic Italy, turning an undistinguished hamlet into an urban center of the 6th century BC. From simple farming communities, the Etruscans developed into a complex society. They formed a league composed of 12 major city-states with a stratified class structure. The aristocracy consisted of the rulers, warriors, landowners, and traders, followed by the artisan class, peasants, and slaves. But even slaves had a degree of social mobility and could achieve higher status. And in an age that was normally male-dominated, Etruscan women enjoyed far more power and freedom than most women of the ancient Mediterranean. Upper-class women freely attended banquets and public events. Many even learned to read. Etruria was a region of rich soil, abundant in timber and minerals. These they traded throughout the Mediterranean, along with shoes, pottery, grain, olives, and grapes. Etruscans helped teach the Gauls, who would become the French, to drink wine. Etruscan products were exchanged for other more exotic goods. Phoenician ostrich eggs, gold, silver and ivory, Greek vases, and Baltic amber. The Etruscans were accomplished sailors, and their fighting ships were among the most feared on the Mediterranean. Etruscan piracy was legendary. Although each of Etruria's 12 city-states probably maintained its own army and navy, there was no strong national alliance, and they never banded together to declare war. Indeed, they never considered themselves a unified political body. 
It was this lack of a central government that left the door open for the encroaching Roman tide and the fulfillment of the prophesied doom of the Etruscans. Etruscan civilization reached its zenith at the beginning of the 6th century BC. But by the end of that same century, the archaic world of the Etruscans, with its splendid royal and aristocratic life, had begun to crumble. By the 1st century BC, Etruria was finally overrun by Roman legions led by rival generals Sulla and Marius, and peace did not come to the area until Emperor Augustus claimed control in 31 BC. The Etruscan language was replaced by Latin. Etruscans became Roman citizens, and one of the world's most glorious civilizations vanished. The Etruscans, sensual, enigmatic, mystical. From their relics of death, we learn the story of their lives. From their tombs, we discover the legacy of a lost civilization.